Well, good morning and welcome to our Advent Sunday service. It's really great to be able to be with you to share um, on the start of the church's new year. As we do so, let's have our opening responses. The world belongs to God, the earth and all its people. How good it is, how wonderful to live together in unity. Love and faith come together. Justice and peace join hands. If Christ's disciples keep silent, these stones would shout aloud. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you came and took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. And so as we enter into Advent, let's watch this little quick overview to give, to let us show us and remind us what Advent is all about. Hopefully you were able to enjoy that little video about what we mean by Advent. And as we come and think and reflect a little bit more about this Advent season, we're going to light the Advent wreath as part of that. So we're going to light just the first candle because the first candle reminds us that we're thinking of the patriarchs. I mean, if you saw the beginning of the video, you'll also have noticed on the opening page um, that is also the candle of hope, which in these times is very apt and very helpful thing for us to be mindful of. So when the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, 
in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, you have created a universe of light. Forgive us when we return to the darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And as our absolution, you may wish to join in with this collective prayer. People of God, awake. The day is coming soon when you shall see God face to face. Remember the ways and works of God. God calls you out of darkness to walk in the light of his coming. You are God's children. Lord, make us one as we walk with you, Christ, today and forever. Amen. Our reading today is also again from um, Margaret Houston Pritchard and we're going to um, listen and watch the video as she talks to us about awaiting and coming and the opening Sunday, this first Sunday of Advent. lighting a candle, but this is a different kind of candle. And our space is now dressed in purple, and there are more candles that we haven't lit, because today is the beginning of Advent, a time of waiting and getting ready, and the church will be dressed in purple, our waiting and getting ready color. And in Advent, we light one more candle every week as we count down to Christmas. So as the year outside gets darker and colder, the light in our Advent wreath gets stronger and brighter. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of the church's year. So we light one candle as we begin to get ready and wait and hope for the promise of Christmas. And during Advent, we remember how the people waited and hoped for Jesus to come. And we remember how we are waiting and hoping for Jesus to come again. And this is some of what Jesus said about him coming again. Jesus said, in those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give out its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the earth will be shaken. And the Son of Man will come in glory and send out his angels. And he will gather the people from the four winds, from the ends of the earth. And they will be gathered together. Learn a lesson, he said, from the fig tree. You know that when the branches become tender, when the leaves come out, that summer is coming. You know that is a sign. 
So also, when you see these things happening, know that that is a sign that I am coming again. But he said nobody knows the exact day or hour. Nobody knows the moment when I will come again. So be ready. Be waiting. Stay awake in your heart so that your heart is ready for me to come. It is like when a landowner goes on a journey and leaves a servant in charge of the door to open it when he gets back. That servant must be awake, must watch the door, must always be ready. So stay awake in your hearts. Stay ready. Stay waiting for Jesus to come again. And the people who heard him listened to what he had said, and they wondered about it. And we're going to wonder now, and if you want to pause the video to wonder with the people that you're with, do that. I wonder what your favorite part of this story was. I wonder what the most important part of this story was. I wonder why we use purple as our waiting and getting ready color. I wonder what you have had to wait for this year. I wonder what it feels like to hope for something to come and save you. I wonder what we can do to make our hearts and minds ready for Jesus to come at Christmas. I wonder what you're doing to get ready for Christmas. I wonder if there's anything in your house that you would like to use to make something or play with this story. I wonder what part of this story is for you. I wonder why we have Advent and Christmas at the darkest and coldest part of the year. I wonder if you have any questions or thoughts about this story or about Advent. And we can keep wondering throughout the week, but for now, our story is finished. Hopefully you would have found some of Margaret's um, conversations and thoughts quite helpful as we enter this Advent season with that story from Mark's Gospel. And as we continue to wonder about the special time of year, we can wonder what it might have been if it, this year hadn't been so devastated by the impact of COVID-19 and the implications and the misery that this has caused to millions of people, not just in this country, but the world over. 
And we might want to wonder where God is in all this. For all the hope of Christmas and the longing for God's purposes to be fulfilled, what hope is there when we might be people who are thinking, well, where has God been in 2020? It's a very real question and one certainly that has value. And the first Sunday in Advent is this day when we consider the role of the patriarchs. So I wonder if they also thought, where is God? Because after all, they didn't have a Bible to reflect upon. They didn't have the inspiration of the life of Jesus to refer to. How did they understand the awaiting of hope, joy and realisation of the coming kingdom of God? The reality is that the issues we face today are very similar to ones that we've faced before, but wrapped up in a different way. And that's not in any way, shape or form to belittle anyone's experiences, whether they have maybe lost hope, lost a job, or worse still, lost a loved one. But it does hopefully, however, put it into some sort of context. We have the benefit of hindsight and know that it, we can look to Jesus, even if right now, perhaps, we think he might be absent. But God's promises have been shown time and again to be steadfast and sure. We know that he will pull us through this, perhaps with some scars, but as the Footprints poem reminds us, that even in the toughest darkest and most difficult times, that is when God will carry us, even if we don't recognise it at the time. So we definitely can look forward with hope and positivity, that God is with us and that as we look to celebrate his presence with us in the person of Jesus, we can rely on him to be our Lord and Saviour, not just as we come through Covid, but also in the months and years to come. Amen. So let's move into our time of prayer. And when I say the words, Lord, let us pray to the Lord, you may wish to respond with the words, Lord, have mercy. Watchful at all times, let us pray for strength to stand with confidence before our Maker and Redeemer, that God may bring in his kingdom with justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That God may establish among the nations his scepter of righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy that we may seek Christ in the scriptures and recognise him in the breaking of bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That God may bind up the brokenhearted, restore the sick and raise up all who have fallen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy that the light of God's coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and the shadow of death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That with all the saints in light, we may shine forth as lights in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And so let's just spend a moment or two in quiet before the Lord, offering to him any people, places or situations that are on our heart or mind today. And particularly today, we continue to offer to the Lord Alison, Beryl, Celine, David, David, Enno, 
Fabian, Flo, Georgie, Joan, Joshua, Julie, Kate, Lucy, Martin, Neil, Nettie, Pam, Paul, Paula, Rihanna, Sam and Trish. As we come to our conclusion in our prayers, let's say together the prayer our Saviour himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord our God, grant us grace to desire you with our whole heart, that so desiring we may seek and find you, and so finding may love you, and so loving may hate those sins from which you have delivered us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. With love and compassion, come, Lord Jesus. With judgment and mercy, come, Lord Jesus. In power and in glory, come, Lord Jesus. In wisdom and in truth, come, Lord Jesus. May God the Father judge all merciful, make us worthy of a place in his kingdom. Amen. May God the Son, coming among us in power, reveal in our midst the promise of his glory. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope and constant in love. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and those whom you love this day and remain with you always. Amen. Great to join um, together, even if we're apart, if that kind of makes sense, um, on this special day, this Advent Sunday. Just one thing I'd like just to remind you of, um, if you're able to do so and to tune in at four o'clock later on this afternoon for our parish um, service, which will be broadcast live on YouTube um, and later again, um, well, once it's on there, obviously it will be um, able to be viewed at any time. But if you can join and watch that, that would be really, really great. We are having a Zoom meeting at half four, immediately following that throughout the parish. Um, if you are part of the parish, then you'll have the details. If you're not, but would like to be part of that, please just drop me a line and we can get you involved. Thank you very much for watching. One other thing I'd just like to say is if you have been watching and you're not part of our regular congregation, it'd be really great to know where you're watching from, um, just so to um, encourage us as much as anything else. So take care. God bless. Have a great Advent. Hopefully um, be with you again soon. Take care. Bye bye for now. Thank you.